right, everyone, if we can all come together, I know I'm probably interrupting some juicy conversations, but I just want to get the presentation portion going so that you all can get back to those awesome conversations. So my name is Paula Glover. If y'all can give me a little shout out in the chat, if you can hear me, that will be perfect. Hear and or see me, that will be awesome. The chat should be on your right hand side there. Ah, you can hear and see my beautiful face. Excellent. All right, y'all. So I am so excited. Again, my name is Paula Glover. I am um, Director of Recruitment and Project Management here at the Mind Trust. And this is our kind of first kickoff event for Innovation School Fellowship. But let me tell you why we're excited. We're excited about this because this is something that we are going to do quarterly to make sure that we are keeping in touch with all the folks that are interested in Innovation School Fellowship and make sure that we keep you all up to date and just keep those touch points going. As I know we have people as far south as Texas, as far east as New York. So just really, really excited to have you all here. The flow of today is going to go like this. You're going to hang out with me here for about 10 to 12 minutes chatting a little bit, giving you an overview of the Innovation School Fellowship. I will have to name y'all. I have dogs. I have pets. So you will see them from time to time. If you give them attention, they won't leave. So just act like they're not there. Any so, but this overview will give you a little bit piece of what we're looking for with the Innovation School Fellowship, as well as characteristics, um, what the history of it is, et cetera. After that, I'll go through some rules of engagement for this awesome platform that we're using that is a minority owned and operated. It's called Remo, where you'll have the ability to go in and out of tables. So you will have a table set up for the wonderful school leaders that are here with us tonight. We have Kiana Warren from Purdue Polytech. Yes, former fellow with us here at the Mind Trust. We also have Eddie Rangel from um, Adelante Schools, who is a former fellow, and we have Mayat Lands, who is from Rooted School of Indy, here to give their stories. You can hang out in the, at their tables to be able to chat with them. And then there'll also be a Mind Trust table for you to hang out and chat with the folks from the Mind Trust, as well as what I like to affectionately call Paula's Urban Hang Suite. Well, you can come and chat with me if you like and hang out. So really excited to have you all here. So let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. All right. Chat a bit about who we are at the Mind Trust. So this is all about the Innovation School Fellowship. So here we have our mission and vision here at the Mind Trust. You all are awesomely educated folks, so I will give you a minute or two to read this. Just want to stress a couple of things that we here at the Mind Trust, anyone you talk to, our North Star, is that we firmly, firmly believe that every student in Indianapolis will have access to excellent education. We also want to make sure that we are disrupting, and I do mean disrupting. If you talk to me on any day or follow me on Twitter, I do say abolish. I believe the whole education system needs to be set afire, but be that as it may, we are here to disrupt the systemic racism in education. Also with our vision, we look to be a city where every kiddo has access to an excellent education and where they can, um, their race and income are no longer those predictors of their life outcomes. Here's some food for thought. If you're ever on Indianapolis Jeopardy about the Mind Trust, we were founded in 2006. And this was our journey to transform the educational landscape here in the city. So our overall goal is to achieve lasting um, systemic change and then create those better opportunities for all K through 12 students. Now, when we talk specifically about the Innovation School Fellowship, that actually was not created until 2014. And this was in a partnership with Indianapolis Public Schools, which you may also hear me refer to as Center Township, and the Mayor's Office of Education and Innovation. 
So what happens out of our fellowship is that our fellows have the opportunity to launch autonomous schools. So these are schools that have the ability to make decisions on what is best for their kids, their community, and their staff. Now, depending on who you talk to, but this came straight from our <laughs> strategic plan, we have invested and opened over 30 schools that are serving more than 6,000 students. What makes us a bit unique with our fellowship is that it enables our fellows to have sufficient planning time where they are totally devoted to that while they're in our fellowship. So they're not, you know, working a day job and then doing this all at night. It's all incorporated. And then we build upon the best practices that allows us start the start of a school within one to two years. So I know a lot of you may be thinking, well, what are some of the qualifications we're looking for? What is it that I need to attain to or ascribe to? The first and foremost is that we having that experience leadership with a demonstrated track record of improving academic outcomes for all students. And I can't stress that enough. Also with that, having that experience in coaching and developing adults, you know, from time to time, I can see an awesome teacher that can get those results through children. But actually, as a school leader, you want to be able to get those results through other adults so that we're delivering that high quality instruction to our babies. Also, having experience managing teams through change. You know, I was recently... Um, facilitating a change management workshop. And one of the things that we talked about was the fact that change really isn't that difficult. It's the process leading up to it. Because like tomorrow, Kim Newton could call me and say, hey, Paula, I want to whisk you away from all of this and give you $60 million worth of a spending account. And I would have no problem with that change. <laughs> it wouldn't bother me at all. So it's really helping those teams understand that change is not difficult and sometimes change is healthy. Also with that, folks having that, leaders having a demonstrated evidence in developing strong systems and protocols that support your organizational culture. And what I mean by that, since you're an autonomous school leader now, you will have to be, have the ability to create those things and make sure that they work and have pilot plans and rollout plans and constantly looking at it and tweaking it, et cetera. If you want evidence of what that looks like, I highly recommend you go into talk and ask those questions of our school leaders that we have here today, and they can answer those questions for you. And then along with that, a demonstrated commitment to equity and inclusion. I cannot stress that one enough. Now, we are also looking for folks that have high expectations for all students, not making those excuses for our students. We're having those expectations for them proven dedication to DEI, and with that, a drive that communicates resilience. If you talk with any one of our fellows here today, Kiana, Mayat, Eddie, they will tell you that their probably vision and plan that they had when they started is now something totally different and how they had to be resilient in that and not allowing those tiny step backs or those speed bumps to cause them to just quit or give up. Having that fortitude visionary solutions for intractable challenges. And then with that charisma, everybody likes to follow somebody that they like at least. So a charismatic leadership style that motivates stakeholders. Now we'll put a pin in that y'all because sometimes there are autocratic decisions that have to be made by leaders. I tell people all the time, if there's a fire, I don't need a leader to be charismatic. Just tell me where to go. So being able to flex in and out of those leadership styles is another thing that really needs to happen. So here are some of the things that go into play with the fellowship. It's a two-year fellowship experience that does include a full salary, including healthcare and benefits, um, opportunities to travel and engage with leaders at some of the nation's best schools. We even have opportunities to travel abroad now that the world is starting to open up. There's also with that leadership training and development opportunities. And then you'll get that cohort experience that folks with similar goals and diverse backgrounds, and you have a support from a network of expert consultants and coaches that are both within the Mind Trust as well as people that we um, partner with. These are some dates for you to remember. January 9th is when your statement of intent is due. 
January 24th is when the invitation um, to selected applicants for full application will be sent out. And then the full application will be due on February 6th. Now the dates get a little more squishy as we move on because mid-February, early March will include internal interviews. We're even incorporating site visits this year, as well as those final selection interviews that will occur on March 7th, with it going to our the Mind Trust Board on March 17th. I want to take a moment, Urban Hank Sweet. Thank you, Holly Fiddler. And that's a shout out to my boy Maxwell with that. I want to take a moment. If you have any questions about the PowerPoint or anything that was presented, please feel free to put it into the chat. Would love to hear from you. I'll be quiet for a second for that, but before I be before I am quiet, if you have questions specific about the fellowship experience. Um, anything about the overview of the fellowship. We do have some awesome folks that are here with us today from the Mind Trust. We have Sarah Marshall, who is here, who is our Senior Director of Talent. We have Sonia Peters, who is here, who is our Senior Director of Incubation. We have Bernadette Monk, who is here, who is our Manager of, school, of Incubation and School Support that will be hanging out in the Mind Trust area, if you have any questions. I'm also will be available in the Urban Hang Suite. I even think Kelly Marshall has made an appearance, who is our Senior Vice President of Schools. All right now I'm really gonna be quiet to see if anyone has any questions to put into the chat. 